It is one of humanity's epic journeys. Thousands of years ago, people first came out of the wild and formed civilization. They would build huge monuments like the pyramids and all the great cities of the ancient world. But why did they do it? What forces gave birth to civilization? For years, archaeologists have been trying to get back to when it all began, to find the answer. And now at last it seems they may have done it. For they are now exploring a lost city of pyramids in Peru. It is nearly 5,000 years old. And the story it tells about why we embarked on this great journey is more extraordinary than anyone had ever expected. Peru's desert coast, trapped between the Andes Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. Nothing survives out here. Explorers once hurried through in search of the gold and the treasures of the Incas hidden in the mountains beyond. But no one stopped. But then, seven years ago, somebody did. Ruth Shadi had heard of some mysterious unexplained mounds and, alone, set off through the desert to find them. And then, right in the middle of this dead land, she found this. A huge hill rising out of the desert. When I first arrived in the valley in 1994, I was overwhelmed. This place is somewhere between the seat of the gods and the home of man. It is a very strange place. Then, as she looked closer, she thought she could see something hidden under the rubble and stones. In her mind's eye, she could make out the faintest outline of a pyramid. And as she looked around, she could see another, and then another. Ruth Shadi had stumbled on a lost city. It was a discovery that would stun the world of archaeology because it would finally begin to solve one of the great unanswered questions. Why our ancestors abandoned a life of simplicity and started down the road to civilization. Today's modern city is the pinnacle of human civilization. Millions of people choosing to live and work together. In a civilization, everyone has a specific task that helps towards a common goal. Workers, professionals, homemakers, they all come together to build the same society. Above them all, powerful rulers. They command who does what and when and where they do it. But it was not always like this. How this complex system came about has long been a huge puzzle to scientists. For more than a century, surely one of the most important questions addressed by archaeologists is also its biggest. What is the origin of civilization? This has been a central theme, a guiding post for virtually all archaeologists working on every continent of the world. 
because civilization was not inevitable. For more than a hundred thousand years, there were neither rulers nor cities. Humanity either roamed the world in small family groupings or lived in tiny villages. There was little planning, little leadership, and no future. Just survival. And then something happened. 6,000 years ago, people started to move out of their villages and built huge cities. Archaeologists call this crossing the Great Divide. This happened in six places across the world. In Egypt, Mesopotamia, China, and India. And in the New World in Peru and Central America. Without these pioneers crossing that Great Divide, our modern world would not exist. And what's exciting for us is that here we are in the 21st century living in societies that ultimately are, that ultimately result from that historical change, that historical divide. Archaeologists examined each early civilization in turn, searching for clues as to why they'd suddenly appeared. And again and again, they found they had many things in common. For instance, numeracy, mathematics, and calendrical systems. Writing. Pottery. Metallurgy. But above all, there was something else. Monumental architecture. In every early civilization, it was the same. Huge, monumental structures. This was the ultimate sign of people coming together under rulers for a common goal. Pyramids marked the arrival of civilization. You can't build a huge structure like that on the basis of consensus. You have to have leaders and followers. You have to have specialists. You have to have people who are in charge, people who can tell individual groups, all right, today you will be doing this. This group, you're going to be doing something different. But none of this explained why our ancestors crossed this historic divide. What had made us give up the simple life for the city? That question still bewitches archaeologists, because to explain it is to understand the very soul of modern humanity. And that's the key question. How does that happen? When does it happen? And why does it happen? There were, of course, plenty of theories. Some said it was irrigation. Others, trade. Some claim, even today, it was aliens. But many said it was something else entirely, something terrifying. Warfare. The theory was simple. Warfare forced groups of villagers to huddle together for protection. This led to new ways of organizing society. Powerful leaders emerged, and these leaders became pharaohs and kings. They would assign tasks and organize lives. Complex society was born out of fear. For 20 years, Jonathan Haas and Winifred Kramer have tested the warfare theory around the world. A husband and wife team of archaeologists, they found the telltale signs of battle in every early civilization. As you look at culture, as it becomes more complex, warfare seems to be everywhere. That these societies seem to be always at war, or war is depicted in the art, war is depicted in the architecture. You see a warrior class, or you see standing armies, you see generals. When you get